Hi, I'm Billy Gwaltney, and this is the CYA Podcast. This show is for the physician who understands the importance of protecting everything you've worked so hard to achieve. Each week, I'll bring you tips and advice to help you cut through the clutter and misinformation and show you exactly what you need to preserve your income and way of life. If you're ready to achieve the peace of mind that only financial security can bring, let's get started. Hello, welcome to this episode of the Cover Your Assets podcast. This is your host, Billy Gwaltney, and as always, I'm uh, really excited to be with you today. I'm excited about our topic today. It's uh, We're tackling the topic of why the broker matters, and I, I really enjoy talking about this. I think it's a very legitimate question when a client will ask me, I work with physicians across the country, actually all over the world, because you ladies and gentlemen, move everywhere, uh, which I love. But in talking with physicians uh, about their private specialty disability coverage, they'll ask me, why should I work with you? And they're they're almost apologetic about it. And I tell hey, don't don't apologize. That's a, a question you should ask everyone, because who your broker is really does matter. Disability coverage is uh, very detailed uh, from a contract language standpoint. It's, it's not an intelligence thing. It's, it's an understanding of how these contracts are worded. It's an insurance lingo and industry thing. The details are complicated just because it, you're, you're looking at different parts of the contract that can supersede other parts of the contract. And if you don't really know what you're looking at, you can think you read something and you don't know that that part of what you just read is null and void because of something in a different spot in the contract that said it supersedes all the previous parts. And so if you don't know what you're reading and you don't know what you're getting, then it's too late at the time of claim to find out. Here's the thing, the bottom line, at time of claim, if you ever uh, become disabled and we have clients on claim that unfortunately were healthy enough to get the insurance up front, so they never thought they were going to be disabled. They never dreamed it. They got the insurance to check a box, but they did it right. And they, all of our clients get paid. But at the time of claim, what happens is the claims people are going to pull out your contract and just read it. Okay. They're not going to ask you what your broker said. They're not going to ask you what you think your definition is. They're not going to promote the name brand of their company and how, how financially strong they are. They're simply going to pull out the contract and read it and determine if you have triggered a benefit. That's it. If it's not in writing, it does not exist. If your broker told you something and you just went by that and that broker didn't know what they were doing, or maybe they did know what they were doing and didn't care, then you're in trouble if your contract doesn't match up with what you think it says. And so making sure you're working with a specialist that works with thousands of physicians, that has a track record, that you can verify them online, that you're comfortable as you talk with them and as you interact with their team, because how they treat you up front is going to give you a really significant glimpse or picture into how they're going to handle you at the time of claim. And so uh, the broker is really important for making sure that those definitions are what you think they are. Okay. Again, it's not that, that, a financial advisor doesn't care about you is that they don't know what they don't know. If they're not doing this all day, every day, they don't know about discounts. They don't know about contract language changes. Most of our of people we talk to, most insurance agents don't even know what a recovery benefit is, for example, which I've covered in multiple podcasts as being one of the three absolute non-negotiables to a top tier contract. And so your broker really does matter in making sure that the details that you think you're going to have are, are going to be there. The other place where your, your broker matters is at the time that you're applying and going through the medical screening, the influence of your broker, the, the, uh, how the underwriters perceive the broker, the amount of business they do with this particular company, if it's good business, if, if they enjoy working with them, those things can influence how smooth that process is during the medical screening. If you have a medical history, if you have a surgery in the past, if you have a complicated situation, then your broker's the one who knows how to navigate that because they've been doing they've done it hundreds or even thousands of times in the past. And so those details really matter. It doesn't mean the broker can get you approved for something if you're not insurable. 
but it does mean that your broker gets the benefit of the doubt a lot more if they're a specialist and, and these companies know and like them and respect them than if they're somebody they, they only do a handful of policies with. The other place that your that your broker matters is as you transition and move into your attending job and you want to increase coverage, helping you calculate that, making sure that you understand what the options are, what the discounted rate is, the steps you need to take. They make it easy for you to do that. It should be electronic. It should be relatively quick. Underwriters have specific information that they need. So uh, when when you're, if your broker is communicating with you and, and it seems like they're bugging you, asking you for a lot of stuff, they usually are not. It, it may seem like it's a lot, but it's just some of the boxes that need to be checked uh, for reinsurance and with the underwriter for their file to make sure that, that you financially qualify for the amount of coverage that you're getting. Insurance companies just want to be sure that they're not issuing more insurance than someone financially qualifies for. And so those details matter as well. And so your broker will help you calculate those figures and make sure you have the relevant information to make a decision. The other part, and maybe most importantly or equally important, uh, where your broker matters can be at the time of claim. These companies, uh, if you have a true specialty disability contract with one of the top handful of carriers now, then the time of claim, these companies are excellent at adjudicating claims, okay? Okay. But your broker generally, depending on the company, can be as involved as you want him or her to be. And that really is important from a position of advocacy and making sure that you're getting the attention that you need, making sure that your file is not on the bottom of the pile, uh, is towards the top, making sure that questions are being answered that have been asked. And that is a significant role. In 2022, I had a client who filed a claim and went direct to the insurance carrier to file his claim. And he thought it was kind of an open and shut case, but some things got lost in translation and he was actually denied his claim. He had told me what the claim was going to be, but he said he would handle it uh, and would just let me know if if he had any questions. And so I said, okay, that's fine. Do that. And he had some questions because he was denied. And so he calls me in a panic and, and I knew when I was talking to him, I said, something doesn't seem exactly right. If what you've told me is true, then uh, let me talk to um, the claims people. And, and he had to sign an authorization to allow me to, to re- be exposed or, or hear information directly with the claims person for HIPAA reasons. But he signed that authorization and I was able to talk to the claims people. And I came back to the client and I ended up talking to him about the steps that were needed. And all that had happened and, and I don't, shouldn't say all that happened, but, but it wasn't that he was trying to get paid something he w- didn't deserve. He was disabled. He had just not communicated effectively and, and answered the questions that the insurance company had asked. And his attending physicians that were uh, overseeing his care or the physicians in charge of his uh, treatment for his condition uh, had also not properly communicated with the insurance company. And so some things had gotten lost. And so I... I I got on the phone again with my client and talked to him and told him the steps that needed to be taken. He went through those steps and long story short is he was approved for his claim and it wasn't all that long later. He just had to update some things and get some some clarification information to the claims people with the insurance company and they approved his claim. So the next call I got from him was this ecstatic call of just, thank you, Billy, Uh, I got approved. I got the check. They paid him for the for the months that he had not received. So he was actually paid, uh, like made whole for months that had already passed that he was due a benefit. But his his claim process had been extended because he, he just didn't know what he didn't know. Uh, I had another client who was receiving benefits and uh, she ended up needing to reach out to me because she thought she had gotten some information to the insurance company. They had not received it. They thought that just things had been lost in communication and I was able to get involved and clear things up. She got her check. She got a direct phone call from the head of claims from that insurance company, making sure that they were aware of her situation. And it was just a significant relief to her to know that what she thought was going to be a panicked situation and her claim was all of a sudden going to disappear, that she was going to continue to get paid. Things had been corrected and everything had kind of the ship had been righted. And so she was in a good path. 
I say that because, again, your broker is not going to make you get paid for a claim that you don't deserve to get paid for or that's they're not going to take a, a non-claim and turn it into a claim that's legitimate. OK, but when there are legitimate claims and people are going through things as a policyholder, even though you're a physician, you don't know what you don't know. You're not sure how to answer questions that have been asked. You don't know who's on your side. Your uh, fear and anxiety and and worry are kind of permeating your thought patterns uh, when someone is disabled. And so having an advocate for you is really important. If you're dealing with a website, if you're dealing with a 1-800 number, if you worked with your cousin's best friend who or family member who got in the business and two or three years later is no longer in the insurance business and you're left like an orphan policyholder, again, calling an 800 number to get help, then good luck. I mean, it, it, I'm not saying it doesn't mean you're not going to get paid. I'm just saying that if you need help, if you need an exception, if you need someone to advocate for you, your broker is going to be the one that does that. So just make sure they're good at what they do. Make sure they have a track record. Make sure they have systems in place. I train my team. Uh, we communicate with these insurance carriers every day. They know who we are. Uh, they like us. They enjoy working with us. And that's really important. So I'm not saying you have to work with me. I'd love to work with all of you, but whoever you work with, make sure that there's somebody that these companies know and respect uh, from a disability insurance standpoint, okay? Their own section of the insurance company. The disability insurance marketplace is its own unique world, own galaxy within a universe. And so you want to make sure that your broker is someone that knows how to navigate that galaxy, that the specific language. So I hope this helps. The details really matter. You'll just want to make sure that your broker is earning the commission that they're, earn, that they're getting for every single premium you pay. Your broker gets paid a small percentage of the premium you pay for the life of the policy. It's up to you to make sure they earn that. Uh, that's what they're getting paid for. I hope you found this helpful. Happy to discuss further. If you would like, message me here or text me at 704-270-2376. And 704-270-2376. Thank you for your time. I'm grateful for that. Talk to you soon. This is the podcastfactory.com.